Welcome back to Narrator's Cut. Today we're going to show you a 2018 horror sci-fi movie called Bird Box. If you see it, you die. The survivors must now dodge a monster that resembles their biggest fears. A mom and her children set out on a dangerous trip through the woods and down a river searching for refuge. They'll have to blindfold themselves to avoid the evil that pursues them. Enjoy and keep on watching. The film opens with a woman named Mallory Hayes informing two children, identified only as boy and girl, that they are about to embark on a potentially dangerous journey across the water. She emphasizes how important them to keep their blindfolds on as they head out into the wilderness. A box with her beloved birds inside is grabbed by Mallory who leads the children outdoors through a string trail before locating the boat and jumping into the river. It was five years ago. Mallory is a pregnant artist that works in the visual arts. She is visited by her sister Jessica. The two of them sit in front of the television to watch a news story about mysterious mass suicides in Siberia and have now spread across Europe. Mallory's artwork which she interprets as a metaphor for lack of connection, is brought to Jess's attention, and she assures her that that will not be the case with the baby. She then offers to accompany Mallory to the doctor, which she accepts. Mallory pays a visit to Dr. Lapham and clarifies that she is pregnant while drinking. Lapham does not find Mallory's statements amusing and suggests that she consider allowing someone else to adopt the child if she does not believe she is ready to parent the child alone. Mallory and Jess witness a lady they had passed before behaving erratically and slamming her head on the glass pane as they walk out of the workplace. They've realized that whatever it was that was harming folks in Europe and Siberia has now spread to the United States. They dash outside just as the carnage begins, with people slamming their vehicles into one another on the street. As soon as Jess drives Mallory away, her eyes start to acquire a strange tint as she seems to be terrified by something that only Jess can see. Driving rapidly, with Mallory attempting to keep her on the road, Jess flips the vehicle and crashes. The two of them make it out alive, but Jess is still in a trance, and Mallory can only stand there and watch as her sister walks in front of a vehicle. Mallory runs with the rest of the group. She gets knocked to the ground and lands in front of a residence. Lydia leaves her home to assist Mallory, although her husband Douglas opposes her actions. Lydia looks to be in a trance and appears to be talking to her mother before assisting Mallory in getting to her feet. Lydia gets inside a flaming automobile, which quickly catches fire and explodes. Mallory is helped up by Tom, who then dashes inside the home. They are being followed by a police officer called Lucy. Additionally, Greg, the homeowner, Charlie, Felix, Cheryl, and a couple called Jason and Samantha are at the house. B.D. Wong plays Greg, the homeowner, when the latter two get a phone call from their kid, who sounds like he is in danger, they depart the residence. The other individuals all share their observations of those affected by this strange power with one another. Charlie believes that the creature is created by devils that shape a person's deepest pain or most tremendous loss and manifest themselves as it. Their collective realization that the beast is invisible and that staring at it would force one to commit suicide is shared by everyone. In the chaos, Mallory withdraws, and Tom rushes over to console her as she reveals what happened to Jess. The gang then boarded up the doors and placed newspapers in front of the windows to prevent anybody from gazing out onto the street. Today, after spending six hours on the river, Mallory and the children continue their journey down the river, although it is now pitch dark. Mallory tries to communicate with others by radio, and she begins to hear the thing muttering her name in her ear during this process. Olympia, a survivor from the past, implores the housekeeper to allow her inside the building. Douglas attempts to prevent this, but Mallory prepares for the worst by grabbing a firearm. Olympia is welcomed into the home with caution by the others, who know that she is also expecting a child. In response, 
Greg promises to keep an eye on whatever is going on outside by checking on the transmitters within the home. He sits in front of the computers, seemingly waiting for anything to appear on the displays, and suddenly it seems that he has seen something. They can hear a pounding sound coming from the chamber, which is subsequently heard by the others. They get upstairs just in time to see Greg fall over and smack his head on the edge of the staircase, thus killing him. After that, the others demolish the computer display. To that night, Olympia attempts to talk with Mallory about their prospective baby names, but Mallory wants to be left alone. She wanders around the house and believes she hears a pounding noise, but it turns out to be Lucy and Felix hooking up in the living room instead. They were on the river for 14 hours. In the distance, Mallory hears the voice of a guy crying out and indicating that it is safe to remove the blindfolds. Mallory urges the children not to do so. He asserts that he has food and has seen the creature, and he argues that there is no cause to be afraid of it. Mallory pulls her revolver and shoots blindly, just as the guy rushes her and attempts to remove her blindfold off her eyes. Mallory engages in combat with the guy, ultimately killing him by slicing at him with a machete. The gang has begun to run out of food in the past, and they are well aware that aid is not on the way. To visit the store where Charlie used to work before things went awry, Mallory, Tom, Douglas, Lucy, and Charlie all get together. Charlie had locked the business up when things went wrong. They cover the windows with paint and use a GPS to assist them through the process. They get the impression that they are driving over dead people on the road and attempt to ignore it. The GPS then begins to beep over a proximity alarm, which indicates that the thing is encircling the group. Tom is successful in getting them out of harm's path. They make their way to the market and stock up on as much food as they can. Mallory comes upon several birds and chooses to bring them home as pets. After hearing the voice of Charlie's co-worker Fish Fingers, who is trapped in a freezer and begs to be let out, they realize they are in the wrong place. He then goes on and on about how lovely the thing is and how everyone should see it. Fish Fingers begins to erupt, despite the efforts of Lucy, Tom, and Douglas to keep him under control. Charlie sees the thing in the next moments and believes he is doomed. Then he runs at Fish Fingers and locks them both in the freezer, where Charlie succumbs, allowing the others to return to their homes. You may still hear Fish Fingers' cries for release in the background. That night, Mallory and Douglas form a fleeting connection over their concerns. The others then hear what seems to be the sound of a vehicle being driven away from them. They walk inside the garage and discover that it, as well as Lucy and Felix, have vanished. On the river for 24 hours a day, Mallory comes to a halt in her rowing to take a rest. She returns. The boat hits an underwater vehicle, and Boy falls out of the boat. Mallory takes him out of the water and attempts to warm him, but the food and blankets have fallen into the river, so she makes the most of the situation by heating him to the best of her ability. She abandons the children in the boat and ventures into the woods in an attempt to forage for food. The monster pulls Mallory inside a building where she hears a noise and sees items moving on their own as if they were being dragged by it. Her escape from the installation is successful, but a creature calls her name as she exits the building. Mallory shoots her rifle at an invisible thing, which girl hears and decides to leave the boat to assist Mallory. However, Mallory tracks girl down and snatches her, scolding her for abandoning the boat as they return to it. To Mallory, Tom recalls a day when he was stationed in Iraq and how he and his other soldiers would follow a dad as he drove his children to school in all the violence. In addition, the two of them begin to develop affection for one another. Olympia invites him into the mansion to help a needy guy called Gary. Gary is vigorously searched and interrogated by the others. He informs the others that a group of escaped mental patients pursued him and his companion compelling the two of them to stare at the monsters. Gary's companion engaged in combat with one of them, 
enabling Gary to escape and flee to his home. He claims that there are also persons outside who are not wearing blindfolds, actively seeking to view the animals, and want others to see them. Douglas is distrustful of Gary and attempts to force him out of the home at gunpoint, but Cheryl knocks him unconscious and allows Gary to remain, and they lock Douglas in the garage after a brief struggle between the two. Olympia sobs, apologizing profusely for allowing Gary into the house and confessing that she feels like a burden, but Mallory assures her that she is not. Olympia then asks Mallory if she would be willing to look after her child if anything happened to her. Mallory accepts. She then hands Olympia a Hello Kitty toy which she will present to the child. On the river for 38 hours, Olympia's daughter, girl, is shown carrying a Hello Kitty toy, confirming that she is Olympia's daughter. Warn the children that they are nearing the rapids. Mallory wraps herself and the children in a blanket. She believes this will be the most hazardous portion of the voyage. She warns them that someone will have to keep their eyes open to navigate, and both children volunteer. However, Mallory determines that it is not worth sacrificing any of them. So she declares that no one will be looking and that they will face the rapids with blindfolds. Both Mallory and Olympia are in the early stages of labor. While Tom and Cheryl are assisting the ladies, Gary brings out a collection of drawings of the monsters since he is one of the few individuals who has seen them and wants for others to witness them as well. While pulling the papers off the windows, he removes Mallory's birds and puts them in the fridge, which Douglas sees. He then tears the papers from the windows, attempting to evict Douglas from his home. Gary unlocks the garage door. While all is going on, Olympia gives birth to a girl, and Mallory gives birth to a boy. Gary enters the room and raises the shades in front of Olympia, making her feel more comfortable. She offers her kid to Mallory just before she is about to leap out the window of the car. Gary then coerces Cheryl into opening her eyes to the outer world, forcing her to commit suicide with scissors as a result. Douglas enters with the gun but he cannot fire with his eyes open and is fearful of accidentally shooting Mallory and the infants. He successfully shoots Gary in the arm, but he is unsuccessful in killing Douglas by stabbing him with the scissors. Gary and Tom are attracted to the weapon and attempt to seize it. Two gunshots are heard, but Tom is seen alive and well, walking to Mallory and the infant's location. It's now five years later, shortly before the film's commencement, and everything is different. After years of living with and raising their two children, Mallory is confronted by Tom for failing to connect with them or even identify them by their first and middle names. They hear something outside, and it turns out to be a group of individuals driving their automobiles out onto the street without using blindfolds or window coverings. Mallory begins putting up her system outdoors to serve as a warning to the children. In the middle of the night, the two get a radio communication from a guy called Rick, who claims to be in a secure complex with lots of supplies and food for them. He gives them instructions on how to travel to the complex down the river, warning them that it is very hazardous to walk down there with children and that they would need to see to make it through. He instructs them to follow the sound of birds to locate the location. Tom is eager to see the facility, but Mallory is concerned that it may be a trap. Outside, the survivors from earlier manage to make it to the residence. As Tom confronts the intruders, Mallory and the children are escorted out of the building. Tom is ordered to remove his blindfold by the survivors, commanded by whistling marauder, dressed in black. When they come upon Mallory and the children, Tom shoots and kills three of the marauders before taking a shot himself in the leg. Tom removes his blindfold and murders two more people before chasing after Mallory and the children to track down the leader. The entity begins to impact Tom, but he fights it off long enough to murder the creature's leader before turning the pistol on himself and informing Mallory that Tom is no longer alive. Mallory then gathers all of the children and leads them to the river. With 42 hours spent on the river under their belts, they rapidly reach the rapid's crest. 
When they approach the turbulent waves, Mallory attempts to navigate them, but the boat tips over, and everyone is thrown overboard. After calling out for the children, Mallory discovers Boy in the sea, but Girl has made it to the shore, and Mallory can locate her since Girl is armed with a bell that continues ringing. The three then proceed to go into the woods, where the thing talks to them and uses all of its strength to attempt to get them to look. However, Mallory's will is more potent, and she convinces the children to listen to her and not look at the creature. Following the sounds of the birds as they make their way to the complex, she attempts to make it inside, but the thing surrounds them and prevents her from entering until someone unlocks the entrance and allows them in. Mallory's eyes have been tested, and she and the kids have been permitted to enter. In the property, they meet Rick, and Mallory learns that it is a school for the blind and that the individuals who attend are shielded from the entities by the school. Mallory and the children soon come upon Dr. Lapham, delighted to see them. Her questions lead to Mallory ultimately naming the children. The girl is called Olympia after Mallory's mother, while the boy is named Tom after her father. Mallory is quite proud that they are her children and that she is their mother. Afterward, Mallory opens her birdcage, allowing the birds to mingle with the other birds in the sanctuary. That's all there is to it. I hope you like the movie. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more recap movies like this. We'll see you soon. Take care.